question before I start the video. Uh, would you guys like these type of videos to be on Wednesdays where we just talk about tech in general and take a look at devices, whether they're cool or not? I don't know, depending on what you guys want, um, because I've been thinking maybe we can start uploading twice a week where we leave uh, the Sunday videos for the cool cinematic and all the cool stuff that we get to do type of videos. Um, let me know. Let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, I will say Microsoft sent us this so we can actually talk about Surface because I've been meaning to talk about that. So, yeah. When it worked at Best Buy a while back, I used to own a Microsoft Surface Pro 7. I had installed WSL with OneNote. I basically wanted a laptop for my engineering courses. Ever since, man, has the Surface laptop market changed? Like, take a look at this, okay? This year, Believe it or not, is my third Surface laptop ever. Price ranges from $899 to $1999. And after playing with it for a bit, I've realized how much it's changed. Check this out, okay? My 13 inch model comes with 512 gigabytes of SSD, 16 gigabytes of RAM. It's ARM based, meaning it runs Snapdragon X Plus. I believe the goal here was to build this for students, everyday productivity people, built for general use, and I guess it's a laptop for portability, right? But you see, I would mainly recommend this to people who just want something reliable for everyday use, things like browsing, emails, and light productivity. Right now in 2025, companies like Microsoft are building dedicated hardware with what they call an NPU to make AI tasks faster, smoother, and more power efficient. Laptops powered by a Snapdragon chip, which uh, are not AMD nor Intel based, is the reason why this kind of device is better suited for lighter everyday use rather than demanding workloads because ARM allows for better battery life, cooler thermals, and quieter performance all while maintaining strong efficiency for everyday tasks and like I said, AI powered features. And while that all sounds great, there are a few trade-offs to keep in mind. More specifically, compatibility issues. For example, older printer drivers, engineering software, certain professional audio video software, docking stations still may lack full support. Although for mainstream productivity, ARM performs incredibly well. But for heavy workloads, like heavy video rendering, high-end 3D, virtualization, you might want to get a Surface with x86. Now you might be wondering, what in the world is an NPU? What does it do? Well, over time you'll start to see how they'll play a bigger role in everyday tasks and real like AI-driven experiences, okay? Before we get into it, just know that Copilot only works with your consent. It needs access to your data to help you out. And according to Microsoft, that data never gets stored within their cloud. With this, you'll start noticing how the new Edge homepage has been redesigned, right? Edge is now trying to be what they call an AI browser. All of it to be able to understand what you mean the second you start typing. This new smart bar in Copilot mode in Microsoft Edge allows you to search, chat or navigate and it auto chooses the right action for you check this out okay say i'm shopping for some tech presents for the holidays and i've got a bunch of tabs open i can tell copilot to filter all of these by price and delivery date if i want to and if you have items within your tabs that are outside the tech realm copilot gets the context from what i asked and doesn't include them and let's be honest once you start shopping Closing those tabs feel risky, right? We get scared that if we close them all, we'll never be able to get back all of those hours we spent hunting. I feel you. So they created this feature called Journeys. The cool thing about Journeys is that not only does it group your browsing into topic cards on Edge, but you can pick up right where you left off with summaries and smart suggestions. And once you're ready to start ordering, instead of doing it all manually tab by tab, product by product, you can use actions to do it. So Copilot Actions lets you actually do things, not just search for them. You can ask it to complete tasks like ordering an item or signing into a website, and it'll walk you through each step. Because it runs inside Edge, it can use your saved info securely to make the whole process seamless. Like, you know, when you save passwords and account info into your main Microsoft account to quickly access them, and it uses the same concept, except that, well, it does that for you. So really, ARM laptops are all about your average consumer that prioritizes mostly web browsing and office productivity tasks with sometimes a bit of power use. 
And, and all this, not only will it get you better battery life and the thermals, but subjectively a better Windows experience, less glitchy and smoother, where things like Instant Wake, for example, is really good on these. You can also leave it for days and come back to it without it being dead. Turning it on from a fresh boot is quick. So I'm just gonna run a quick battery life test. Uh, it's currently 2 p.m. It's at 15%. You guys are gonna notice how even for like video playback, this thing lasts for quite a while, even at 15%. On top of that, I have earbuds on, so that's good. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm actually gonna eat and just watch some YouTube videos and see how long uh, it takes to deplete pretty much. I actually watched a video on it for like 20 minutes. Turns out it had only eaten like 3% of the battery. Look, I love watching YouTube videos, but I wasn't gonna sit there and just watch for an hour. So I decided to do other stuff while that played on the background. I edited a bit. I spent some time tweaking my Dolly SL setup. I actually used Copilot on Edge a lot to help me out with my Ubuntu setup. I was typing some commands. I was doing more editing, going back and forth between Edge and Dolly SL. And then by almost 2.50, the laptop literally died. It died on me. Um, it died at like 2.50. 57 to 58 p.m. So that's almost an hour of battery life that you can get. And uh, I started this test at like 16, 17%, I recall. But you can get more than an hour with a 20% charge, which is really impressive. Very, very impressive. You, you can tell that ARM is definitely there with battery life. ARM chips, although are known to run on phones and smaller devices, having them run on a laptop really allows for devices to be slimmer and lighter. There is less space needed for cooling or power components and allows companies like Microsoft to make a laptop like this one that is 15.6 millimeters thin and 2.7 pounds. I'm gonna run one last little test. I'm currently charging the laptop at 60 watts. So it's charging at 60 watts. We'll see how long it takes to charge uh, to a decent amount. Let's say like 50%. It's currently 3.03. So yeah, let's let's clock it. It actually took 40 minutes to get a 54% charge on this Snapdragon X Plus laptop, which is a mid-tier chip that powers a 13-inch display with a 1920 by 1280 resolution with 178 PPI running at 60 Hertz with 400 nits of brightness. Aside from that, the chassis has a USB-A port with a headphone jack and two USB-C ports that are 3.2 and not 4.0, but it can support up to two 4K displays at 60 Hertz. I like this sort of rubberized texture in the back. Um, I feel like it definitely protects the laptop when maybe putting it in a bag or something. I feel like it's well thought out. The same thing goes with its feet. It allows to really get some grip to easily open it up with one hand. Remember that this chassis is anodized aluminum and I believe it's Microsoft thinnest and lightest Surface laptop. Inside, the keyboard is exactly what you would expect from a Surface. I love the rubberiness of the keys, especially while you type. These are very much laptop key switches, like you very much feel it. Travel is nice and they are big enough to not miss keys while typing. Keyboard backlight is great. The multiple options and brightness definitely helps at night uh, as it gets darker. Plus lights shine through the keys so it makes it easier to see at night. Plus right at the bottom the surface of the trackpad again very surface like. It's got that nice rubbery feel to it. It doesn't feel cheap or plasticky like it's got some good feedback. And the speakers well they are pretty decent. Check this out. You're browsing epidemic sound on Microsoft Edge probably looking for music for your YouTube channel. I see a track titled Bonafide Bars by Dusty Dex. Need help with anything specific? I do like that the webcam here is 1080p. Uh, the mics also sound very decent. And because of the NPU, you can allow yourself to do quite a few things with the camera, like a portrait blur or standard blur. Even add a creative filter. Look at that. That's pretty cool. There's an animated filter. Oh. That my skin looks good, that's sick, I like that. All of this is part of their AI stuff, guys, and the rest of it, well, it actually has Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.2, so I guess that's a good thing to have for a laptop like this. Now, is this a laptop you can game with? Um, not really, I mean, just opening the Xbox app takes quite a bit of time and it's kind of slow. I did install Parsec in order to connect to my Windows PC at the office, and you can very much try to game on it, but you will notice quite the latency. I'm not quite sure I would choose this as a laptop to casually game on, 
but as a laptop for productivity apps, definitely. I mean, even light editing on DaVinci is great. DaVinci is now developed for ARM and so are some other apps within the Adobe suite. So as long as you are trying to accomplish a very light workflow in these type of apps, you'll be fine. But for Word, Excel, Figma, some web development in WSL, Copilot, laptop just definitely serves its purpose. The point here is that uh, this is what the Surface has turned into for 2025. I also wanted to take the time to also explain ARM, especially with the holidays coming up, to know exactly what you're getting into. Productivity is what they are aiming for, and being able to use AI to really implement useful features within your everyday life is what they wanted. It's no longer just about specs or design. A lot of companies like Microsoft are looking to develop a product that feels like a productivity partner. One that truly uses AI to simplify workflows, anticipate what you need, and adapt to how you work. Surface in 2025 is not only about hardware, but it's also about software being optimized for that hardware.